Hello everyone, I'm Carmen from the Featherweight Shop. Today we're going to be doing some troubleshooting. We're going to look at machines that were stitching properly and then for some unknown reason they seem to quit. Maybe they're skipping stitches, maybe they're not stitching at all. Maybe they're even doing this, a big bird's nest underneath the fabric. <clears throat> but before we get into that, I want to do some, oh we'll call it Featherweight 101. Some basics of the mechanics of how the featherweight forms its stitch. So let's grab this machine and get started. Now I've got some pieces removed off of this featherweight just so that we can see what we're what we're talking about here a little more clearly. I have the feed dogs removed and of course the needle plate. Um, I also don't have of course a bobbin case in the machine but I want to show you how a featherweight forms a stitch. I think it's kind of important that you know that because it helps a lot in troubleshooting. We have the needle here. It is threaded. And an important thing is that the thread is from right to left, from inside out. Now, when the, when the needle plate is on the machine and there's tension on this thread, when it goes down, See if I can move this a little bit. As it goes down through the hole in the needle plate, it reaches a very bottom point. That's what we call bottom dead center. That's when the needle is all the way down. When it comes back up, 93 one thousandths of an inch, the thread relaxes just a little bit. And this point right here, right there, that is the hook, the point of the hook. And what that will do is it will go through that little loop that's formed when the thread relaxes. And so it will pull around. And if we had a bobbin case on the machine, it would slip all the way around like such. It's going to get hung up there. And then it would pull the bobbin thread back up to the fabric and that would form one stitch. Okay, to show you this a little further, I've taken an old rusty needle plate, this one here, and I've ground it away. I, I've, I've cut out all the unnecessary parts uh, so that we can use this uh, for forming a stitch so that you can see further how this works. I've got a, a bobbin case actually in the machine this time, and I have the positioning finger in its correct spot. and. I'm going to hold the, hold the thread here. As we come down, it picks up, picks up the loop there. And now let's watch it from the underside. Okay, let's show this again from the underneath side. I've got the bobbin case loaded with white thread and red thread through the needle. The needle's going to come down, pick up the hook and now we'll see it start to come around the bobbin case it slides over the bobbin case and now it's going to grab the the bobbin case thread the white thread and pull it up to the top and that is how a stitch is formed thread comes up there and needle comes down and we start the process all over again Okay, I've switched out this bobbin case and I've put a reproduction in because these are often a cause of uh, great frustration and problems here. Uh, this bobbin case here is not marked at all. Uh, sometimes the reproductions are marked 45751. Uh, the originals, like we had in there earlier, are marked 45750 and they also say Samanco on them, either on the outside or the inside. So what happens here, one of the problems amongst many with these uh, reproduction bobbin cases is uh, that when you try to sew with it, they have a hard time getting properly seated on the bobbin case base. Uh, and so when, we'll just do this again, as the needle comes down and the loop or the hook picks up the loop and it starts to bring the the thread around, one of the problems we see with these is it will slip in behind the bobbin case 
and when it does, everything will come to a crashing stop. The safest remedy is to stick with original bobbin cases whenever possible, like both of these, both marked Samanco. Okay, just for illustration purposes, I've threaded this needle backwards. You can see here that I've threaded, threaded it from the outside to the inside. And what happens is when the needle comes down, and then when it relaxes, the loop is technically on the wrong side and it misses the hook and you're gonna get a skipped stitch. Most of the time you're not gonna get it to sew at all, but I have seen them occasionally grab it. But with the proper amount of tension set on there, it's usually gonna miss it completely and you're not gonna get the, the machine to sew. So it's very important and a simple solution is just to make sure that you've threaded it from the inside out from right to left. Here I have my Schmetz Super Needle. We're going to use it for this illustration because it's so large that you can easily see the different parts. What I want to show you is that the needle has a flat side to it. Most all home sewing machines take a standard needle and the featherweight is no exception. And the interesting thing about these is that sewing machine needles, as they get larger in size, they grow only on the rounded side, not the flat side. The flat side stays consistent. So as they get larger, they grow in this direction. The reason that the flat side stays consistent is so that when the needle comes down next to the hook, it stays in the same position. It stays consistent each time. Otherwise, if we had a small needle, a very tiny one, it would move away from the hook. And if we had a large one, it would eventually get so large that it would run into the hook. So that's why they only grow on the round side as they get larger, not the flat side. Okay, now, also for illustration purposes, I've put the needle in backwards. I've put it in with the flat side to the right. And as we just were learning on the Schmetz Super Needle, that moves the entire needle farther over to the right, which moves it farther away from the hook. So now when the needle comes down to try to form a stitch, it reaches the bottom, it's tight, it starts to relax. Look how far away the hook is from that thread. It can't catch that loop and hence no stitch. Simple solution to this one, simply turn the needle around and that problem will be solved. And nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm at that age now where if I don't have my reading glasses on occasionally, I'll slip a needle in there backwards myself. Another common cause of skip stitches is thread caught in the hook assembly area. We can see here from this hook assembly that it's got some thread in there. This is usually caused by uh, not holding your thread tails as you start or turning the hand wheel uh, in the opposite direction. The hand wheel should always turn towards you. And so as the needle comes down and makes that little loop and we want the hook to pick up that loop, well, if we've got this piece of thread that's whipping around in there, it's going to push that loop out of position and cause you to have a skipped stitch. So it's important to get that, to get this out of there. Now to get this thread out of there, you're going to need something like a pair of hemostats to grab onto that thread. And then you can usually turn the hand wheel the opposite direction in the direction you're not supposed to, and often it will just unwind off of the hook assembly until you can pull it free. Now while hemostats work great for this, we found there's one issue with them, and that is they end up walking off, walking out of your sewing room, and ending up in the, uh, the toolbox or the tackle box. So we had these developed. They're of course a pretty red color, uh, but they also have a little featherweight on them.
and so there's no mistaking who these belong to. But there's one other feature about these that I want to show you, and that is they have a smooth jaw, unlike most uh, hemostats. We've called these our threadostats. You can find them on our, on our website under threadostat. But they have this smooth jaw, so as you pinch down on the thread, you can see that there's no, there's no room for the thread to slip out of there. So they lock on the thread and uh, they work great for getting, getting thread out. Now quite often it is not necessary to remove the hook assembly from the machine to get those thread jams out. But if you will turn the machine over and take the drip pan off the bottom, there's this hole that exposes so you can see to the bottom of the hook assembly. And often you can just reach in there and grab that thread and unwind it. Spin the hand wheel here, see and we can just unwind it. Unwind it right off there. Okay, here we've got another machine that also will not sew. Uh, this machine here, maybe doing a little cleaning or something, it's quite often uh, that somebody takes the needle plate off uh, to get the thread, I mean to get to the lint out from underneath it, and that's a good thing. The lint can interfere with the loop formation and cause skip stitches. So when you take this off and you put it back on, it is absolutely imperative that this positioning finger, this piece right here, that thing right there, has to be in that slot underneath the needle plate. Many of you have probably seen my posts on Facebook where I refer to this picture right here, which is in the manual, and it says your machine is not going to sew because the positioning finger, A2, is not in the slot at B2. So, pretty simple solution here, and that is simply to raise the needle plate up and to move the positioning finger so it's back under that in, that, in that gap, in the escapement gap. And your machine will not sew. <laughs> if it's outside of this gap, it'll usually end up with a big bird's nest underneath your fabric. Pretty frustrating when all you were trying to do is to get the lint out of there and you made things worse. But fortunately, pretty simple solution. Well, we hope you found this helpful. And just a quick recap. Needle needs to be inserted with the flat side to the left and inserted all the way into the needle bar. The needle also needs to be threaded from right to left. Other issues can be caused by reproduction bobbin cases, thread behind the hook assembly, and the positioning finger out of place. Now one thing that we didn't cover, but it is covered in other videos uh, on our website, is that if you're using a modern spool of thread like this one and you're trying to use it without a thread stand that can also that can also cause skip stitches you know one of the things that we really enjoy here at the shop is when we get emails and phone calls from you who've been able to help a friend out maybe you were at a quilting retreat and somebody's featherweight quit working and you were able to take the information that you learned here and get it working again that's very rewarding, and it's rewarding for us as well. It's why we make these videos. So if you have any questions, give us a call, send us an email, or post a question on Facebook. We're always glad to help. Have a great day.